Welcome to the fifth lecture of Buddhist for Beginners by Buddha Land, a straightforward explanation of Buddhism. Different schools of Buddhism. There are three primary schools of Buddhism, Theravada, Mahayana, and Vajrayana. Through the resulting variety is astonishing, all schools share a common foundation. We'll start with the Theravada school of Buddhism, the doctrine of elders. Theravada Buddhism is the oldest and most orthodox of Buddhist three primary schools. It is based on the recollection of the Buddha's teaching. Theravada Buddhism is most vital in Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar. It is sometimes called Southern Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism stresses spirituality, the enlightenment of the individual, self-discipline, the importance of pure thought and deeds, the importance of the monastic life, and the strict observance of the ancient Vinaya code. It has distinct roles for monks and lay people. It emphasizes that each individual is responsible for their salvation and takes the position that only monastics are capable of reaching Nirvana. Theravada Buddhism was one of the 18 schools that existed centuries after the Buddha's death. It spread from India to Sri Lanka and then to the Southeast Asia and remained close to the original Pali Canon. The other 17 schools disappeared when Muslims swept into northern India and destroyed the Buddhist monasteries. Theravada Buddhism is sometimes referred to in somewhat dismissing way as Hinayana, lesser vehicle Buddhism by Mahayana Buddhists. The school is rooted in the Tipitaka, the three baskets. Three collection of texts collected in the Tipitaka are some of the earliest known Buddhist texts. The sutras, account of hundreds of oral teaching given by the Buddha and his senior disciples. The Vinaya, rules of the monastic order. And Abhidharma, later scholarly commentaries on the teachings. Together they form the Pali Canon, a collection of foundation texts that comprise Theravada's doctrinal basis. For the Theravadin, the spiritual ideal is the Arhat, or accomplished one, who through personal effort attained Nirvana, liberation from the suffering of cyclic existence that marks samsara, or worldly life. In classical Theravada, a layperson could become a steam enterer, the first of four attainment levels on the path to the enlightenment. But the disciplined life of a monastic was deemed essential to reach the highest level, a non-returner, like the Buddha, whose final nirvana experience at his death freed him from rebirth. Temples in Theravada Buddhism. There are essentially three kinds of Buddhist structures. One, stupas, bell-shaped structures that contain a holy relic or scripture. Two, temples, places of worship, somewhat similar to a church. And three, monasteries, which include living quarters and meditation cells for monks. The most important buildings in Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia are vats, Buddhist temples, and stupas. Stupas are solid structures that typically cannot be entered and constructed to contain sacred Buddhist relics. Theravadan stupas symbolize the Buddhist concept of the universe, the concrete dome that rises from the square, a circle base, represent the dome-shaped sky, enclosing the world mountain, which pierces the crown to form a small balcony at the summit. The shape of stupas may have been inspired by the belongings and begging bowls of the wandering Buddha. The objects inside stupas are often unknown. Local temples are essentially self-sufficient and rely on their land and support from the local lay community to keep going. The property belongs to the community. There is not a hierarchy of priests, bishops, and archbishops like there in Christianity. Buddhist temples usually contain numerous Buddha statues. The central Buddha images are often surrounded by burning incense sticks and offerings of fruits and flowers. Many Buddhist temples face south and sometimes to the east.
but never to the north and west, regarded as unlucky directions. Many temples are entered through the left door and exited through the right. Meditation in Theravada Tradition There are two main forms of meditation in Theravada tradition, Samatha and Vipassana, inside meditation. What is Samatha meditation? Samatha meditation refers to meditation aimed at calmness or tranquility. It is specifically focused on quieting the mind and can be achieved in credible states of calm and focus. According to the contemporary Theravada orthodoxy, Samadha is used as a preparation for Vipassana, soothing the mind and strengthening the concentration to allow the work of inside, which leads to liberation. Samadha is the earliest form of the meditation. The Buddha taught his followers how to practice Samadha meditation using mindfulness breathing. These are the necessary steps for Samadha meditation. One, sit in your normal meditation posture. Two, strengthen your back. Three, relax your shoulders, keep your head evenly balanced. Four, let your tongue touch the palate. Five, relax your face. Six, close your eyes. Seven, Focus your mind on the rising and falling of the breath. 8. Bring attention to the small triangle area between your upper lip and the nostrils and feel every in-breath and out-breath. 9. Whenever the mind wanders, gently bring it back to the awareness of the breath. Another type of meditation is Vipassana meditation. Vipassana is a Pali word that means inside into the true nature of reality in the Buddhist tradition. When we use the term meditation, Vipassana is often what we have in mind. Vipassana meditation has gained popularity in the West through the modern Buddhist Vipassana movement, modeled after Theravada Buddhist meditation practices, which employs Vipassana and Anapanya meditation as its primary techniques. Vipassana meditation differs in modern Buddhist tradition. It includes any meditation technique Cultivating inside, Vipassana keeps the mind on the wisdom path and realizes the phenomena of the mind and matter as they are. The physical body that we have is continuously forming and decaying from the cradle to the grave. Vipassana meditation aims to free oneself from all kinds of dukkha, mental suffering and physical suffering, by realizing the body-mind process and its true nature. Next, we will cover a monastic community of the Theravada school of Buddhism. While interacting with monks, there are a few things to be aware of. First of all, keep in mind that monks don't eat in the afternoon, so be mindful about eating or snacking around them. Secondly, if a monk is sitting, show respect by sitting before starting a conversation and avoid sitting higher than a monk if you can help it. Never point your feet at any Buddhist while sitting. Thirdly, you should only use your right hand when giving or receiving something from a Theravadan monk. Women should also be aware of the few additional rules that apply to their interaction with monks. For example, women should never touch a monk and even brush against a monk by accident. When entering a shrine, step in with your left foot first and exit with your right foot. You can also practice the traditional greetings. To do this, place your hands together in a prayer-like gesture and give a slight bow when greeting a monk. To show more respect, you could hold your hands higher than usual near your forehead. Nearly every temple has a small metal box for receiving donations from the public. These donations keep the temple running, usually in a very thin budget. If you enjoyed your visit, Giving a small donation would mean a lot. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends.